lyttet til Rekrutteringsrådet med Sverre Haugen og Ida Charlotte Fehr. Podcasten hvor du lærer mer om rekrutteringsfaget. Produsert av rekrutteringsselskapet Meier Haugen. Ida, uh, I've really, really been looking forward to this talk. Uh, and I have to ask you, would you say that you're intelligent? Oh, that's a good question. I think it's uh, depend on what you mean with intelligence. Yeah, because we 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 do test candidates all the time, you know, and we test them also on intelligence. Uh, I guess you've taken an intelligence test before. Oh yes, I have, and that makes me uh, I wouldn't say nervous or stressed, but I don't like them that much. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm asking you this because we we will talk about intelligence today, but not the regular type of intelligence, but mm-hmm. artificial intelligence or AI. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, what's your what's your relationship to that uh, in the work context, uh, Ida? Oh, with me, I think it's coming more and more. So we just have to kind of include it in our work uh, life now. But I am really curious about how I actually can use it in the most effective way. So uh, uh, then I, I know that you, Svada, so are really uh, uh, engaged to this topic. So I would really look forward to hear what you think. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm. That's why I'm so eager and looking forward to this talk because we we have we have a guest which we will soon reveal into this uh, in this podcast who works with AI, and I've been testing AI different types of AI within recruitment the last five years. So and and. It's kind of interesting everything that's happened now when you see how some of the new things happening on AI, like uh, OpenAI's uh, ChatGPT, gains more users faster than, for example, Snapchat or the newest uh, social media platform. So it's all of a sudden, in 2023, AI is becoming every person's thing mm-hmm. uh, from, being, from being a very niche thing before. Which is interesting. Yeah, that's so interesting. And if you think about social media and Netflix and Facebook and everything, they are all already deciding what we are going to look at some movies and what we maybe like to buy and everything. So I think it's really cool that we now are ready to take it into the work life. Yes, yes. So oh, we can't we can't uh, continue this without introducing our guest. Uh, we are very happy to have uh, with us in studio today, Sergey Sherbak. Welcome, Sergey. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Hi. So, Sergey, uh, you have been working with AI for six years, and right. you're today you are the head of AI at Conside, which is a legal tech and consultancy company. If I understood right. correctly. Right, but that makes you. If you worked with AI for six years, then you're more or less you've been with AI since the birth, haven't you? No, <laughs> I mean in practical terms, you could say that. But AI as a field is quite uh, old one. Uh, there were, were many AI winters there, so I would say that AI spent several decades in development, but it yeah. uh, really showed its value recently. It yeah, all led to this. It's 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 something's happened the last months, half years. Yes. And that something is called ChatGPT, I guess. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. Uh, but but before we dive into that to talk a bit more about what ChatGPT actually is, the goal of the topic will be, of course, to talk about how this might affect recruitment, how we can use it and stuff. But but first, AI is it really intelligent? Uh, there are different opinions on that. I would say that it shows sparks of intelligence, but it it's not really intelligent. It's just very good at mimicking intelligence. Oh yeah, but that, is is that the case of all of all uh, AIs? <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, right now it is, and you know if we are uh, looking at the result that the AI produces, then we could say that it's intelligent. But if we look at the process, how it does it, then I would say it's a really advanced algorithm and mathematical computation that really like mimics the workings of human brain, so to speak. Okay, okay. So this is, uh, this is uh, I guess I'm not the only one who gets this Skynet feeling. Uh, Terminator 1997, was well, that what it is? It's a bit too early for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, 
um, I went to this. I went to this conference last week, Sergey, where we where I talked to, I talked to different companies using AI, and the big buzzword of of now is AI. Almost all the boots had AI in some sort of pitch or slogan or name or whatever, and everyone uses AI to everything, and it's mm-hmm. it's like a miracle cure to everything. Uh, but like I mentioned to when Ida asked, I've, I've been testing AI in recruitment or what they claim to be AI in recruitment for many years, and it's definitely nothing similar to intelligence. It's it's felt like it's a long way, and we haven't put anything into practical use in Meyerhagen for five years, even though we've tested dozens of different things. Some mm-hmm. of it has been close, but it's always missing because it's not good enough. So. What's the difference between the things that happen now with ChatGPT and what's sort of been going on the last decade in the, in the AI? Right. Uh, so uh, I suggest you know we could look at hype in general, the trends and the hype behind them. So we had uh, different overhyped technologies. Uh, you say now everybody's talking about AI, and you know uh, five years ago everybody was talking about blockchain, and yes. uh, a couple of years ago everybody was talking about metaverse. And uh, last year, NFTs, right? And these are all kind of BS uh, technologies, I think, that do not really have practical value. Uh, Apart from blockchain, maybe, but just in 1% of cases. Uh, But AI, uh, it's not, it's hyped, and some people say it's overhyped, but it actually has some practical value to back up this hype, because everybody, everybody can use it now and try uh, for example, ChatGPT or any other chatbot based on large language models and uh, extract value from for themselves right now. So it's not just some distant promise. It's actual. It's an actual working technology that everybody can use now. So yeah. the difference, uh, I guess, the advancement that happened in the AI field uh, over the past, you know, three months, um, it, it's more than. Uh, three years before that, uh, so much more has happened. Yeah. Um, so the technologies that we have now in large language models, they really revolutionize the field of natural language processing and what AI in, uh, in the field of NLP is capable of. So it's nothing like, uh, like before, I guess. Uh, right. Yeah. And, and when we talk about you you mentioned the word the large language models, which is that's what Chat GPT are. Uh, in the same way as Google has released their Bard, which is also a same similar type of model, I've understood. Right. But you also have other types of AI, which is also developing. Actually, for me, it started with Mid Journey, which is image generation, where I can create mm. big pictures, tell the algorithm, can you imagine a doghouse made from sushi, and it creates pictures of a doghouse made from sushi out from nothing, from pixels randomly put together, which is kind of insane and obviously affects a lot of stuff within uh, some <clears throat> some professions. But, w- yes. but, but that's a different type of AI. Yes. Uh, I would say that they all belong to the same field of generative AI, which is subfield of AI. So generative AI is AI that generates stuff, right? Uh, ChatGPT generates, generates text. Uh, ah. And uh, bit journey or stable diffusion, they generate images, and but architecturally they of course are fundamentally different because they work so, with different data types. Yeah, but uh, so that this is one subtype of of AI, generative AI. What's what yes. are are there any other types we could mention? Have you heard of? Uh, them? Yes. Uh, so AI is a very broad field. Um, you know, it's AI. Uh, I would say, uh, like, you know, Russian doll, or imagine boxes, one uh, large box, and inside this box, we have a smaller one and then smaller one. So, uh, the largest field, uh, the general domain, is called uh, machine learning. And ah. inside, the ma- inside the machine learning domain, we have uh, uh, AI, which is uh, deep learning, which is based on deep, deep uh, neural networks. And uh, I would say, subjectively, a subset of deep learning is generative AI, which is uh, yeah uh, generates uh, information of different types. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's very interesting. It is, and and I have to say, I, I when I tested ChatGPT 
the f I guess if it's three version three or what it was after New Year's, I was my mind was blown. First of all, I could speak Norwegian to it, and it sort of responded to anything I I threw at it in a good way, as as opposed to everything I've tested before. So it's no wonder the hype is there. But um, let's talk about how this can be put into practical use. And I know from from my case, I've already started using it in some cases. For example, translation. When I need to translate a text, I can use this to translate. Um, also, text generation. If I need to write an email, I can have the, the, the AI write a suggestion for me. Uh, it's not perfect, but it saves me a lot of time when I can just tweak a half-written text. Uh, how I, about I, you, Ida? Yeah, I actually had a customer uh, last week who tried ChatGPT for a case that they were going to present just to sh check out how the result would be there. And just in case if some of the candidates would uh, make that option to use ChatGPT to make their presentation. And I really was amazed about the result. And they were really curious oh, yeah. if there were come any cases uh, that were similar to that one they have made there. <laughs> <laughs> but I haven't seen one similar yet. <laughs> but it was very good, they said. <laughs> so they, they would rather hire the AI. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> almost. <laughs> how, about, how about you, Sergei? What, what do you think when it comes to applications of use? Applications are very diverse. And, you know, um, uh, AI pragmatism is quite rare to find these days because most people, they are either, uh, they are on usually on diametrically opposite sides of the spectrum. So either they're too optimistic about AI and they think that ChatGPT can do anything. And let's not forget that, you know, the goal of ChatGPT is to please the user who converses with, with it. So to make the output as uh, good in the eyes of the user as possible, even if it doesn't really know the answer. Uh, and on the other side of the spectrum, we have AI pessimists uh, for whom even GPT-4 is not enough and who believe that AI is not a threat and it will never replace any jobs and uh, it's just uh, stupid. Uh, so AI pragmatism is something, you know, it's a balanced approach. So uh, to, to be an AI, uh, you know, in the AI pragmatism camp, one need to understand, uh, to understand what the uh, capabilities of AI are and what are the limitations and risks. Uh, yeah, I would, the basics. Yeah, I was thinking about that because when I was also trying to try to make some picture uh, with uh, Donald Trump on a white horse, and I wasn't <laughs> sure of what I was going to write uh, to yeah. make that picture. And also when I was going to make a CV, I was wondering how could I ask uh, or um, formulate the sentence good enough to understand what exactly should be made. So, such a, such a, do you think there will be some more uh, positions, uh, AI, special consultants that have to come? Right. Yeah, it's, it's a very good question. Uh, right now, the field of uh, prompt engineering is uh, developing really fast. Uh, so there are positions, uh, prompt engineers, uh, several positions open at, at top companies all over the world, and they are pretty well paid. Uh, so uh, the job of a legal prompt, uh, or I'm saying legal prompt engineer, you know, by habit, uh, because I work in the legal field, in legal tech, uh, but um, uh, prompt engineer in general, the goal of uh, that professional uh, is to interact with large language models through prompting. And prompting is basically the instruction of a user uh, when you submit something to uh, the large language models, uh, when you ask them to do something for you, to explain sure. something, to, to us answer a question or to draft a document, that's a prompt. And it's an art in itself, because as you said, Ida, uh, you know, if a prompt is too gener uh, generic or general or unclear, then the result would, would not be satisfactory. But the more specific the prompt is, the more context aware it is, the mm. better the output would be. Mm. And that's a that's a very good point. And I've seen sort of tips on this and tested it as well. That is a big difference. For example, asking just the fact that you sort of explain to the AI which role the AI should have the ch with ChatGPT at least. For example, mm. instead of saying um, write an application letter for a job as blah blah blah, mm. you could write 
uh, I want you to act as a Java programmer expert and write this application letter to. So by setting this context, you get a different type of text. Uh, wow. Yes, yes, and this is very good conditioning. Uh, you know, it's a very good conditioning technique. Um, I remember there was an interview with the uh, OpenAI guys uh, before ChatGPT got released, and they were talking about large language models. So they achieved the state of uh, AI where can they just instruct the model, you know, don't be racist, for example, and it will not be gen it will not generate any racist uh, text. Uh, or, you know, to put some constraints or put some instructions so they can unlock different capabilities of the model based on predefined instructions to the model, what you are, how to behave, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and that's, that's a very good point. I saw um, a, a fellow recruiter, a friend of mine, shared on, on uh, LinkedIn an article showing that job ads written by ChatGPT were less diversity friendly than others. Uh, and then they had the research and the source to this article showing how this was tested through some divorce, diversity testing tool, etc. But I think a lot of the problem is, like you say, in the prompt. What do you ask the AI? And if you, if you ask them the right things, you will get the right answers. Right. And, you know, it's a bit more complex than that because it also depends on the capability of the, of the model at hand. Uh, so let's compare ChatGPT, which is, you know, some people say ChatGPT4, which is not correct. Uh, ChatGPT is a separate single model, which is in uh, uh, developer terms called uh, uh, GPT 3.5 Turbo. That's ChatGPT model. And then there is GPT4. Uh, for regular users, for the, to the public, GPT4 is available uh, only if you pay for ChatGPT Plus uh, subscription. So GPT4 and ChatGPT are uh, very different models when it comes to capabilities. Uh, GPT-4 is way more advanced, and uh, GPT-4 also has a vision module, vision uh, capability. So GPT-4 is a multi-model uh, model. Which, what, what, uh, is that, not, what does that mean, the vision um, thing? It, it has uh, a capability of uh, analyzing images apart from oh. text. Okay. Yes. So, like, imagine, you know, we as humans, we uh, have a brain, of course, and we uh, receive information uh, to the brain from different sensors. For example, so the listener now, they get it through the ears. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Not seeing so how we, beautiful you guys are. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see how, how we sound uh, later. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, so listening or hearing is one thing. Then, of course, image processing, vision. Is a very important part of understanding the outside world and also you know text understanding so we understand language and uh, we process it in our heads yeah so gpt4 uh it it has this vision mode or vision capability which contributes to the uh, overall capabilities of the model if you take if you compare results of uh, gpt4 passing bar exams or lsat exams uh, without vision the result is worse sometimes by 40% comparing to even when the vision is enabled. And even if vision is not involved in the processing of actual text, uh, but still the enabling of this capability contributes to the whole quality of the model. Oh, really? So it's, uh, yeah, it's like building yeah. up the brain with different sensors. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's fascinating. Yeah. yeah. But so, James, if I want to, for example, develop myself within this field about AI, could I... Is it now possible to, for example, take some courses due to how you should type or formulate yourself when you're going to work with AI? Do you know that? Uh, absolutely. Uh, there are many prompt uh, engineering workshops out there, and uh, we at Consite provide as well uh, one, of, uh, one of such workshops. Uh, so, but, of course, you know, uh, this workshop, they, they focus specifically on prompt engineering techniques mm -hmm. and um, how to interact with the model, uh, how to formulate your task first, because task uh, formulating the task correctly is very important. It's mm -hmm. paramount to really understand, okay, what is the task? What are you looking for? What are you expecting from the model? And then to engineer the prompt properly. And prompt can, uh, usually comprises, you know, 10 different elements. It's like context, uh, style guide, 
the role of the model, how to act, uh, what are the limitations, any examples and things like that. So prompt is a really comprehensive subject. And then uh, after you desi design the prompt, you should test it with different models. So for most users, it's just ChatGPT now, but uh, I would recommend always to pay for ChatGPT Plus uh, to really take advantage of GPT-4, which is way ahead of ChatGPT in all uh, senses. Um, so yeah, it's about task, uh, prompt, uh, output from models and comparison of outputs to, to see the best model for the task. Mm. But on, you can find a lot of information online uh, when it comes to prompting and, you know, it's all, it's all public. It's all about the desire to learn and also the time that you can allocate to it. Yeah, but one one question uh, we we've talked a bit about or a lot about ChatGPT three, which I've now have learned is three point five turbo, and ChatGPT four. Uh, but how there apart? is no ChatGPT four. There is no okay, ChatGPT four. Was... Just just GPT four. <laughs> G... Okay, sorry, GPT four. Thank you for correcting me. How about Bard? Uh, Bard, um, it's not available yet. Uh, at least, you know, as, as of a couple of weeks ago, it was not available in Europe for testing. And uh, how you can test it in Europe now is by using some unofficial APIs that I, of course, didn't do because it's not, uh, it violates uh, Google terms of service. Uh, but there are many unofficial APIs out there that just uh, kind of um, forward uh, API from the US to European server you know, something like that. So I would never recommend using any unofficial APIs for both uh, BARD or any other language model. Uh, so I don't, I didn't really try myself BARD that much. Uh, but it's, it's, it's available in the US. Yeah, right now, yes. Uh, so I'm actually located in the US for a couple of months more. So, so I have my opportunity it. <laughs> to test it now for a couple of months. I will do that before I come home. But as far as I know, BARD really, you know, cannot compete with GPT-4. Uh, yeah. That's what I heard from all sources. So that's why I'm not really even interested in testing it so much. Uh, because even if you take internal memos from uh, Google that was uh, leaked uh, like a couple weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, they say that, yeah, um, the, the competition is tough and uh, they are not really happy with the uh, performance of BART. And okay. uh, developers also are not. Uh, happy that much. Uh, so I would say that the most advanced model now is GPT-4, of course. So it's okay. uh, by all means. That's very, very interesting. So let's let's um, have a look. It's, 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 it's tempting to dive even more into this, but let's go into <laughs> recruitment instead and look at potential uses. We've talked about sort of some general uses. I mentioned that I've used it for translations. You can use it to draft text, etc. What I've also used it for, which is not recruiting, uh, but it says something about the potential, is to analyze big data sets. I had like three text answers, 300 answers from uh, on different on a free text question, and I had ChatGPT analyze what's the, con what's the summary, what's the trend of this data set, which is also very time saving. Uh, yeah. But before we go, go into that, I, we have to talk about, actually, there are two more technical things I need to discuss. Sorry, I said we would move on, but I need to take them. <laughs> One of them is, I've heard, and I know that many people have heard, uh, about the cutoff, that, that ChatGPT 3 or 3.5 Turbo is based on a data set up until one cutoff date, and they can right. talk about yeah, September that. 2021. So that's true. Yes, that's true. But GPT-4 does not. It's the, the same. same. The okay, same. so it's not true that they connect this also to live search or some other. They can data. through plugins. They recently started to roll out plugins to the public, and one of these plugins is called uh, something like Search something like that. So it basically connects ChatGPT or GPT-4 to the internet. But from my experience, it's quite bad now. Uh, I tried it a few times and, you know, the waiting time is huge and the result is really bad. So I think okay. it's like a long way to go to make it really 
uh, live, so to speak. And I think it was, it was the reason, of course, why they didn't connect it to the internet from the start. The only successful, more or less, integration of GPT-4 uh, into live search is Bing AI. Oh, yeah, and okay. Bing, Bing AI is not just GPT-4, of course. It's, they, they're using uh, the proprietary uh, model. It's called Prometheus model. So it's a combination of GPT-4 and their search functionality. Um, okay. Yes. So it, it's quite good. I mean, at least as good as it could get right now. Exactly. So that was the cutoff. And the second last technical question we need mm. to ask, which is probably relevant for you since you're in legal tech, because we just a couple of days ago, so we heard about this case where uh, an American lawyer is trialed because <laughs> he used, <laughs> you're laughing, <laughs> he used ChatGPT to sort of find some reference cases and it used ChatGPT to check that they were actually true, yeah, existed, yeah. and they didn't. So it lies. Is that yeah. the case, that these AIs and, lie? Uh, and we are dealing with, uh, yeah, here we are dealing with just uh, stupidity, of course. Um, and uh, too big of an optimism when it comes to AI. And uh, uh, I mean, the, the, uh, always the approach that anybody should take is always to check the output of uh, any AI. So right now it's not; it will never be hundred percent reliable. Um, and um, whatever you generate with ChatGPT, GPT four, always check the output. But uh, just to uh, answer directly your question about does it make stuff up? Yes, it does. It's called hallucinating. What do you call Hallucin it? Hallucinating. So oh. it, it, it's yeah, it's prone to hallucinations. Hallucinations is making stuff up. And it does it uh, because it tries to uh, basically please the user uh, and make them believe that the output is good enough. Uh, so to uh, generate as a good an output as possible for the user based on patterns it learned in the past. Oh, yeah. And uh, be because of that, uh, sometimes it yeah, makes many things up like uh, the references to legal cases or even names of legal cases. Yeah, but um, uh, I think a pretty good example of how, you know, to test these hallucinations uh, by yourself would be to to go to ChatGPT interface and uh, uh, go to, uh, in parallel, go to any news portal, find a news article, uh, copy the URL of that article, and go back to ChatGPT and ask it to summarize the article from URL uh, without, of course, enabling the search functionality. So if you just ask ChatGPT to summarize an article from a URL, it will generate a summary, uh, which is completely made up. And it generates a summary based on the content of the URL itself. Because usually the URL is called a slug. We have, like, for yeah. example, theverge.com slash Elon uh, hyphen mask hyphen released hyphen Tesla hyphen X. So these are the words that ChatGPT will use to generate the summary, and it will it will based on Elon Musk Tesla X for example, it will generate you like five paragraphs uh, completely made up and trying to uh, make you believe that it's really an actual summary. So the only correct information in that summary would be Elon Musk. Tesla X and the rest would be about something about pricing or uh, the speed of the, the new model competition, which it completely made up. Uh, so yeah, uh, one should be careful and check the output always. Oh, uh, Sverre, I can, I can uh, tell the listeners that I can see your uh, enthusiasm glowing from San Diego too. I'm having lots of ideas. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's really, really fascinating. It is. Uh, okay, so now we can move on to, the, to more recruiting-specific things. Um, Ida, uh, wh what, where would you ideally want the AI to help you as a recruiter? Oh, as a recruiter, I, I would really like some help uh, during the job analysis to how to create the best possible uh, specification about the position. And of course, uh, to the screening uh, process or tasks where you have if you have 100 applications, how could you sort out, uh, for example, the 20 best of them? 
to make that uh, step of the process more effective. And I, and I also like the thought you have, Sverre, about viewing ads more uh, correctly, in a way, to... Uh, yeah. um, not you mean the advertising or the yeah, job the ad- ads? Yeah, job ads also where you have to write the right sentence to, to meet all different kind of needs and uh, persons. Yeah, mm. yeah, exactly. Mm. Diversity, Diversity, friendly. And, yeah. yeah. That was many things. So <laughs> that's, a, that's a couple of things. I have some I'll ask afterwards. But first, Sergei, do you think the way you see it, can I, uh, I help with these things? Absolutely, yes. It can help. <laughs> To what extent, it's a different question, yeah. <laughs> but it, it can obviously help. Uh, I mean, uh, because most of these tasks are text based. Uh, so absolutely, uh, generate, generating job descriptions, uh, uh, even conversing with candidates, doing pre-screening interviews, uh, yeah. providing assistance to them, writing emails. Uh, you know, even the rejection emails, which are hard to write for a human, I guess. But maybe for some it's a pleasure, but for most it's hard, right? Uh, so absolutely, but but uh, the uh, we should always remember about limitations of these models. Uh, so one of such limitations is the context window in a conversation. The context window is basically how much text uh, the model can process per conversation. And conversation, when you go to chat GPT, I mean, I'm not speaking about API developer stuff now, I'm just speaking from a regular user standpoint, yeah, yeah. because most of you use uh, just web interface, right? And so when you go to web UI and you converse with chat GPT and you have a separate chat and you have different tabs for uh, every chat, so you start a new chat and it means that you've started a conversation and there is a, your uh, text and there is a reply, then your reply and so on and so forth. So this chain of texts in the chat, it's called a conversation. And there is a limit uh, uh, of how much information can be processed per conversation. For chat GPT, the limit is 4,000 tokens. A token, it's a, a semantic unit. Uh, it can be a word, it could be a sub-word. So imagine a token like, usually statistically, it's 75% of a word. So if we have, you know, 100 words, uh, we would have more tokens uh, for ChatGPT to process. So the limit of ChatGPT per conversation is 4,000 tokens, which is around six pages of text. Let's put it this way. So 60 for pages. Six, six. Six, six Only pages. six pages for ChatGPT. Uh, for GPT-4, they doubled that context window uh, they doubled it to uh, eight thousand uh, to eight thousand tokens. And uh, the, yeah. one question: Does that mean that after this number of pages, say six or twelve pages, it forgets what's been going on before? Is that the limitation, or does it stop and shut down after twelve? Yes, pages? it depends on the approach you take. From a developer standpoint, uh, the best approach would be to just slide. You know, to have like a sliding window, so you just slide forward and forward. It means that, of course, it will forget and cut the previous, the original conversation that took place. Uh, so it will just slide six pages all the time forward. Uh, yeah. But from a web UI perspective, in your interface, when you converse with ChatGPT, if you put too much text into it, then there will be no generation further. So the model will just stop generating anything because the generation. Uh, the output will be always empty string, it will be zero, basically. But I've tested this. I've tested this, and, and uh, because I pasted some big text, I wanted to translate it, mm. and it mm. translated part of it, and then it stopped. Yeah, and but then when it I, But then I asked, Could you, can you continue where you left off? And then it continued. Yeah, and, and this is a different thing, because this is, I think it's an infrastructural issue. Uh, okay. Because sometimes there is a timeout or the model uh, just stops generating suddenly it, it, because the demand is huge and they are scaling the infrastructure and sometimes there are interruptions in service uh, delivery. Yeah. So that's how you deal with such things. Uh, you know, you, you can just ask to continue, then it will just pick up from where it left. Uh, but usually if it's too much text, uh, then uh, it's just, it will not generate anything further. Yeah. So... I- yeah, either. Can I just uh, ask one more question? I was just uh, thinking for here when you guys talked, because I think it's really important to think about uh, the candidate market as well when it comes to 
use these kind of tools to make it more easy for them to apply for different uh, jobs because uh, it is um, it is a fact that it's harder to get the good and skilled people in. So to make it easy for them to just get a show that they are interested, that would be a, a good thing for us. Don't, what did Sverige? Yes, I, I agree totally. And I think a lot of the tech, a lot of the HR and the money spent on developing HR in HR tech is focusing on the employer side of the table. Uh, but what, the way I see it, if we were able to focus more on the candidate side to meet the candidate needs, you would also solve the employer need. Uh, in, so it's connected. You can't solve one without solving both in a way. So I have some questions to you, Sergey, and this is like yes or no or maybe questions. I'll say some things within recruitment, and you say if. And I think we'll try to limit it to to lang large language models like sure. GPT-4 or ChatGPT. And uh, I'll say something, and you can say if this model can help or not. Yeah, yeah. The way it is now. Okay. Are, are you ready? Ready. Can you use ChatGPT to evaluate many candidates to to choose who you should interview? Yes. To the screening. Um, yes, but may I clarify a bit? It of course depends what information you have about them and in what format. Then yes. Okay. When you yeah, I want. I, I, I will going. ask later. I'm just wondering yeah. uh, since I'm not uh, have not that so hello so much knowledge about it. When you say format, the right format, and you what you yeah, mean? the right format is you know if you have a video for example of a candidate, uh, a video about themselves, how they present themselves, then it would not be suitable for ChatGPT to analyze a video, right? Yeah. Because the okay. format is okay. not, not kind of consumable by ChatGPT unless you translate it into text. Yeah. So the so, more text data you have and the more structured it is, then the better it is to consume by ChatGPT. Uh -huh. So let's say based on CV would work. It's yes. Just CV. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Next question. Can you use these models to create better marketing campaigns? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> no. No added comments to this? No. Uh, it's uh, it's self-evident, self I guess. <laughs> okay. Next question, which is really interesting because uh, we are headhunters. or so we. It's, some people don't like that title, but we are recruiters that help companies find people. We do sourcing, which means finding candidates that aren't actively job-seeking. Can these models help me find candidates that I should contact for a job? Yes, uh, but with some clarifications. It also depends uh, what sources of knowledge you connect the model to and how you do it. Because as, as we discussed, you know, there is a limitation of information that the model can process at the time. And uh, so you will need some search functionality. And then you will need to have a system that actually searches uh, structure the information from that search and then input that into ChatGPT, for example. So 50% of success is large language models and the, uh, large language model, and the other 50% is the implementation of search through different databases. Okay. LinkedIn, for example, uh, you know, as uh, uh, as I know, as far as I know, uh, it limited its API, uh, so you can't really search. Uh, uh, on LinkedIn through API for candidates, so you should use other databases from other sources. Okay, let's 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 take the candidate perspective for a while. Many candidates struggle to to convey their knowledge and what mm -hmm. their their experience. Can these type of models help me be more aware of what I'm good at? Uh, yes, absolutely. How? Uh, models like that, they are really good at ideation and, you know, for brainstorming sessions. They can uh, show you and explain to you what you know, but you don't really have in your mind right now. They can unlock the details and show you the details that you, um, that you just forgot about. Uh, for me, it, you know, it happened many times when, for example, I create a presentation. Uh, or I draft a document and I ask it, I ask the model to improve it. 
or I ask even a question, a question like, you know, did I forget anything? And then it provides oh, yeah. me ideas that actually, yeah, and I was like, yeah, exactly. That's what I didn't even think about. So, so you could, in theory, you could take your CV and you could feed it into this, this model at GPT-4 and you could say, could you suggest what type of jobs should I apply for? Uh, yes, uh, you can you can ask that. You can also suggest to improve the CV uh, yeah. or ask the model to improve the CV and make it uh, look more professional. Uh, for example, okay, let's take a developer standpoint. You are a developer, uh, Python developer, backend, right? Uh, and then you, uh, you you write a CV and in your CV and your expertise, you mention yourself that you have experience with HTML and CSS which is definitely not professional even to mention, because for any developer, HTML and CSS is not really even first, it's not even a programming language. Second, it's every developer must know it by default. So if you mention it in your CV, it means that you are kind of, you know, it's the same as mentioning Google, that you can search Google. Yes. Uh, so if you ask ChatGPT to make the CV more professional, it will just remove that reference, most likely. So the okay. CV will actually be more professional and more grounded in reality. Cool. So good, good, some good applications for most people there, I guess. I have, I have a fi final question for you, which is maybe the most interesting question of them all. Because you say it's an ideation, it's, it's good at generating things. Can yes. these models generate new knowledge? If you look at, for example, um, the Big Five personality model, that's based on analysis of the English language, looking mm -hmm. at lang uh, words, describing personality, grouping them statistically and ending up with the big five, they call it, which is the ocean model, openness, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, consensuousness, extroversion, neuroticism, and agreeableness, right? Can these models generate new knowledge like this? Uh, it depends what we understand by knowledge. Uh, if we, if you mean, you know, uh, but yes, the answer is yes. Um, uh, but um, we, sh we should know that this knowledge has limitation and bias in the past because it's based on the information that was fed into the model. Yeah. So it, it learned from the knowledge already out there. So uh, and it, it will generate, it can generate new knowledge based on the links it uh, connects the previous knowledge with. Uh, so I would say that yes, uh, based on the previous knowledge only. Uh. <laughs> so, so for example, the question I had was because I feel that one of the missing links, and I know that there are some AIs out there, some of the tech companies I talked to in Vegas, mm. they look at, for example, taking a CV and mm. reading the CV and then analyzing and understanding knowledge you have, which isn't written on the CV. For example, I'm looking for a candidate that needs to be good at relations. You haven't written this on your CV, but you write that you work with sales and you write that you cooperate with these and these departments. In other words, the algorithm understands that you're good at relations. Mm. Do you see? So that's, that's generating knowledge based on like connecting the dots of information you have on the mm -hmm. CV. But the interesting would be to look at how can you, for example, classify motivation? Is it possible to say that your motivation types, just like personality has a big five, mm -hmm. is there a big five of motivations to do a better matching between soft skills, what your motivation mm. is from a job to a candidate, which is a missing link still. Yes, it's uh, it's a complex question to answer. Uh, I would say most likely yes, but it all depends on the prompt and the context you provide for the prompt. Uh, exactly. Because I mean, uh, there could be so many variations here, uh, and it depends on the role you instruct the. ChatGPT to act uh, as you know, and uh, the examples you provide, and uh, explain, explaining this uh, ocean model maybe in part of the context, uh -huh. and then the more the broader the context is, the better, the deeper it is, the better the output will be. And sometimes, you know, from my experience, I've worked with uh, ChatGPT and GPT-4 for quite some time through API because I integrated it into my products. Uh, sometimes to just arrive at yes or no answer, you need to submit like one page of a prompt. Okay. <laughs> wow. To cover all the gray areas, to provide context, yeah. examples, and things like that. 
I have a little uh, question uh, to Dan too. Um, do you think this could be some kind of a digital extended uh, wife for Sverre? If you think, have you done that? <laughs> should have you? Can I, should I do that? <laughs> It's a good reminder if you if you take it from a family perspective. <laughs> yeah, but say not yet. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> I actually that's a meant, that's a side note. But I read today I read an article about grief bots, mm. which is the new thing. Mm. Have you heard about mm. grief bots, uh, Ida? No, I haven't. It's 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 a big it's a thing coming now where you have the combination of video generation, voice modulation, and text generation so you can if you lose someone close to you say your father if you have good video if you have good text if you have good images or a sound you can actually get a video meeting with your father appearing to be still alive you can talk about things but it's just ai wow, and there's cool. a lot of ethical yeah, ethical complications and stuff but it's it says something about the power of this uh, it's, it's cool and maybe a little bit scary as well maybe And yes. uh, another example would be NVIDIA. Uh, probably, you know, NVIDIA is the producer of uh, uh, GPUs uh, or video accelerators that are used for deep learning. Uh, so NVIDIA is uh, basically, they created the, uh, they create all the hardware which is necessary for the deep learning industry and to train this large language models on. Without NVIDIA, the industry doesn't actually exist as of now. So NVIDIA, they released uh, Uh, tool very recently that allows uh, users to integrate ChatGPT into video games and have conversations with uh, video game characters, like yeah. you know, realistic, hyper realistic conversations. And there is wow. a demo uh, that you can look up on on YouTube. It's, uh, it's there's a demo published um, that you can really see the capabilities of AI combined This with video games. Yeah. This will be the new standard in video games, I'm sure. Yeah, for sure. So we, I, I totally forgot time, actually. So we, I think we've been going on way longer than we actually intended, and I'm sorry for <laughs> taking your time, Sergei. Uh, okay. Ida, let's go to our our um, regular questions. We we want to cover them quickly as well before we say thank you to this AI uh, is savant <laughs> that we have here. <laughs> Savant, wow. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if Chetje will answer these questions by Chat or if he will answer <laughs> Maybe himself. Will. Yeah, I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready to type. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, that's good. Uh, we just, since we are uh, working with recruitment, we always ask mm. if you have some uh, worst kind of experience mm. with a uh, recruitment process and if, if you would like to share, mm. share it with us. Mm. Uh, I think the worst experience is when you don't get a reply. Um, to your applications or to your follow-ups. Yeah. And that's where mm -hmm. ChatGPT or models uh, like ChatGPT, large language models can definitely help to generate at least some follow-up status emails and uh, at least, you know, uh, draft, uh, draft a rejection letter in the worst case, but at least it, it would be, you know, a closure, so to speak. But mm -hmm. I think the... Uh, Uh, no reply at all, that's kind of the worst experience that the candidate can get. Yeah, that's, yeah, a, that's so true and important uh, to just and, lift up. Unfortunately, a very common problem as well. I'm sorry, sorry to hear that you've been a part of it, but if it's any comfort, <laughs> you're not, not alone. Too much, not too much. It's not alone. <laughs> I think it's 30% of all candidates in Norway approximately don't get an answer. So mm. it's horrible. Mm. Mm. Oh, good. So uh, then we have the last question, and that is, do you have some topics or subjects that you think that we would uh, take further to our next episode in uh, this podcast? <clears throat> yeah, that's that's a very interesting question. Uh, I'm, you know, now I'm really primed for technology discussions, and uh, I would suggest... Uh, I would suggest a uh, discussion about tech uh, again, uh, about AI again, but maybe from a different angle. What exactly the angle could be, it's, it's a different question. Maybe from a practical standpoint, from a product point of view, when you have a product uh, that you can really measure the performance and measure the market response to it. 
because now we are just discussing you know, the theoretical things. I mean, what uh, theory is also very important, but practice is even more important because when you actually build something for recruitment industry or for HR industry and you put it to the market, you put it to use and users react to it and you encounter different challenges and risks and uh, opportunities, uh, feedback, that's, uh, you know, that's where the real value is because now it's, you know, from theory to practice, so to speak. So I would suggest discussion about AI in the room, but really from a practical hands-on uh, perspective, when there is some, some tangible, something tangible already exists in the market. That is a good, good tip. And given that we are way, way, way over time, it sounds like we probably will find material for a new tech AI <laughs> podcast. I'm, for sure. I'm quite sure of it, yeah. So, Sergey, I would like to say thank you very much for for joining us. It's been really, really interesting. Uh, so thank, thank you, you so for much for coming. Us. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Nice and to meet you. Bye bye. Ida, before we yeah. before we log off, I have to ask you: What's your main takeaway from this conversation? Oh, main takeaway! I think that you have to. Be some specialized in AI as well, so you can learn us how to use it yeah. when we're in our work. Yeah, so that's one takeaway <laughs> that we actually need to ensure that we're on top of this, in front of this. Yeah, yeah I think so. Yeah. 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 For, that's the main thing. For me, I'm, I'm taking away several things, actually. First of all, lots of ideas. And I'm really eager to see how this will sort of affect our industry going forward. And I picked up some new words. AI pragmatism is one of them. Uh, I think the the fact that the the topic about prompt engineering was quite interesting, which is new field. Yeah, prompt was a new word for me, so I just have to actually Google it um, to understand <laughs> yeah. something here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Uh, and I also think that yeah, the um, perspective due to the candidates and how we should get the best possible connection to them uh, is really important. Yeah. And it's no doubt there is a huge potential for using this to improve a lot of fields in recruitment, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it, to learn more. Me too, me too. I'm an AI pragmatist. Ah, I can see your heart is glowing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, I'm already looking forward to the next episode. Yeah, we are. Hi. Du har lyttet til rekrutteringsrådet av Meier Haugen. Vi producerer også topplederpodkasten og stillingspodkaster. Har du forslag til gjester eller tema vi bør snakke om, gå inn på vår Facebook-side Meier Haugen. Hold opp!